Hey, it's C.S. Joseph with csjoseph.life doing another lecture. I believe this lecture is season 9, episode 7. Now, it's really confusing sometimes when you're trying to figure out what season we're on for our podcast or uh, what playlist we're on. Well, that's because I jump around, right? I jump around all over the place. I got something in my eye right now. Weird. Just ate, uh, I just ate like a huge thing of beef jerky too. I like jerky and uh, for some reason, I think I got it in my eye, but maybe I can get through this with that happening to me. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I, I jump around on the seasons a lot and uh, the reason is because like I have like a playlist, but I can't just focus on one thing at a time. I have to jump around because I'm a starter type, right? ENTP starter type, informative initiating movement, right? And because of that, I end up having, I get bored doing one thing, I gotta do something else, and I gotta go do this again, and then do the other thing again, and just back and forth, back and forth, until all of a sudden, we have multiple seasons. So, I have like 12 seasons of content up, in terms of different playlists on YouTube, or on the podcast, etc. But regardless of all that, the point is, is that if you see a season and it doesn't look like it's complete, it'll usually probably have anywhere from six to eight lectures in it at a time, up to 16, right? So just be patient with me. I'll continue to uh, film or record and we'll get all of that, all of these uh, different seasons fleshed out. But this particular season is season nine, which is how do the types compare to each other, the extroverted variants versus the introverted variants. So today's episode for this particular season is the ENTP versus the INTP. And thank God, because we've been doing nothing but sensing types for like the longest time, and I'm getting tired of it. So yes, thank God, we get to talk about intuitives for once, about time. Oh my gosh, I was like, oh, if I have to do another sensing perceiver or have another SJ, I'd just be like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's tough, it's rough. Now, luckily for today, we're talking about my type yeah, it's, I, I'm pretty stoked about that. I like, I like, you know, I mean, who doesn't like talking about themselves, right? Yeah, no. But anyway, yes, the ENTP versus the INTP. So let's dive in, shall we? So expert intuitive thinking perceiver, the ENTP informative initiating movement starter type, we already talked about that. It is an intuitive thinker AKA the intellectual, just like the INTP is also an NT intellectual, but its interaction style is not a starter. It is actually behind the scenes, which is informative responding control. Both informative, one of them's initiating, one of them's responding, one of them's movement, one of them's control. Movement means you fly by the seat of your pants like I always do. And I also really like driving fast. Kind of interesting how that goes. I'm very good at driving, if you know what I mean. And I mean like, very good at driving, but still, it's all about the speed, because I have a need for speed. Oh, but those INTPs, you know, driving their car, they're like the old men driving their cars, you know what I mean, or the old women, taking their jolly sweet time, you know, not really in a hurry, I'm never in a hurry. I make sure there's enough time in my day scheduled so I can take my time on the road and make the, the ENTPs of the world, you know, cuss at me, honk their, horns at me, you know, flip them the bird, etc. And it's like, okay, yeah, stop driving like a grandpa, please. Please, INTPs, don't do that, please. I, I got places to go, you know. Well, you're going too fast, you're being dangerous. Actually, no, I'm really good, and I'm so good at driving that driving fast doesn't make me dangerous, it just makes everyone else dangerous. That's, that's, not, that's not on me, right? Yeah, good luck explaining that to California Highway Patrol. Uh, I gotta love those guys. Bailed me out a few times. Anyway, that being said, the ENTP versus the INTP. So let's dive in, shall we? Uh, expert intuition here, the ENTP. ENTPs are all about what other people want. They have that prescient capability. Hey, I can read into the fates of everyone around me, which is true. I literally can look into the future and I can look into the future that other people have and other people's, people's future and see all the patterns. It is all about pad recognition, and I do it logically with TI parent. If this, then this, if this, then this, if this, then this, this is true, this is false. If that's true, then this is false. If that's true, then this is true. If this is false, then that's true. If this is false, then that's false, etc. Constantly in my mind, I'm never not thinking, right? And it's always from the fact that I am perceiving 
the wider space, the metaphysics, the great what if. What if this happens to this person? And then I analyze that. What if this happens to that same person? Then I analyze it and I go through every possible future of that person. Reminds me of a time actually, it was about three and a half years ago. And uh, I was with my girlfriend at the time, my girlfriend of two weeks. And because uh, we, because uh, our anniversary is in March, you know, and uh, so about three years and almost four months together now. And uh, it was about two weeks in and uh, her mother didn't like me and forbid her to be in a relationship with me. And she was still living at uh, her parents' house uh, due to some hard times and she had a low paying job and whatnot. But her mother, because she found out her mother that uh, her daughter was still dating me, uh, decided to kick her out of the house basically, right? And I remember when that happened and her mother, an ISFJ, had got her name on uh, her daughter's car to basically control her life and potentially like call Grand Theft Auto on her daughter. And uh, it was it was horrible. How dare you break the family equilibrium or the family justice because I'm the, f the, the, the family just a car and I expect you to not date this person, you know, blah, blah, blah. Because he doesn't go to church like we do and all these weirdo things that y you would expect from... Uh, uh, corrupted ISFJs, um, or immature ISFJs as well. But anyway, bottom line is I had to drive down there and return the car at her mother's house because she was taking away her daughter's car, which was taking away her ability to go to work, etc. You know, luckily for me, I had arranged for my girlfriend to use my car until, you know, at her current job while I worked during the day. And that way she was able to still have her job and whatnot. And I had her move in with me. But regardless, like, I realized that it was going to turn into a huge conflict between her and her mother. And I literally spent the 30 minutes driving down to that place to drop off this car and get whatever of my girlfriend's belongings that I possibly could safe uh, from her mother. I literally w envisioned every single possible scenario that could ensue as a result of me having that encounter with the mother. And every single decision that I would make as a result, it was like a strategy. I was using my INTJ shadow to strategize, using my ENTP ego to see all of the possible futures and then create a plan or a contingency plan for every single possible future that may happen when I encounter her mother. So by the time I had showed up, I had seen every possible future and how to encounter it. It's kind of like that movie Next with Nicolas Cage and Jessica Biel and they don't go well together. I don't know who thought that they did, but no, they don't. Good movie though, recommend it. Same thing, seeing all the possible futures and having a plan for each of those possible futures. Same thing with the movie Inc. 2009. You have the Pathfinder, Jacob. Recommend you watch that movie if you're an extroverted intuition user. It is totally dope. Although Next is technically more introverted intuition, but still similar concept. Uh, Limitless also shows you uh, Introverted Intuition, which is also awesome. Bradley Cooper did a great job in that film. Recommend that as well. But extrovert, extrovert Intuition is me to see all the, the possible scenarios and then I can make decisions with TI and TE to create plans to uh, deal with those scenarios. And I won. I show up to her mother's house and one of the scenarios played out exactly as I had predicted and I played my hand exactly as I had planned and I was able to get all of what assets she had and recover her and we left the car behind and we left. And that was the end of that. And then shortly later, I got her a nice new job where she was actually making more money than me, interestingly enough. And then she bought her own car and then she paid off her own car. And then voila, here we are, right? Much better situation. And all because of expert intuition, I was able to see into her future and provide her, hey, you might want this or hey, you might wanna do this and give her options. And then she was able to execute on those options, right? So. Expert intuition hero. Now the hero of the INTP is a little different. It is TI hero. Logic comes first. They can see into the future of other people, but they do it from a more responsible, pessimistic point of view. I'm very optimistic, but with my expert intuition, and because I'm very optimistic about it, I'm like, hey, you could do this. Hey, you could do that. You can, you can, you can. You might want to do this. It's possible if you do this. What if this? What if you do this? What if you do that, right? And the INTP, they can do that but they're not really going to do that to anyone they meet. They're gonna do it to like one person, the one person that they know will listen to them, the one person they know will give them a day in court. Why? Because they're TI Hero. TI Hero is constantly like, 
I'm really intelligent and I think through literally everything, right? Which means you probably should listen to me because I know what I'm talking about. And I'm not trying to be arrogant about it. I just know because I spend all the time in the world thinking about it. And because I put in that much effort into thinking in everything, true, false, this, true, false, that, it's just this giant CPU TI hero, huge ass hammer, boom, boom, true, 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 false, 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 etc. Because that keeps happening over and over and over, I put a lot of time in it. You probably want to listen to me. Well, I do that with expert intuition. I'm trying to do everyone, you know, give everyone possible features. But the INTP is just going to do it to the one person that actually listens to them. Because remember, they're introverted. They want to have, they want to interact on that introverted level, which is a one-on-one -on -one situation. Whereas me and three is a crowd, right? So I would like to tell everyone collectively, hey, what can we do or what you can do? But the INTP is going to be more focused on one individual, one at a time, or or one organization at a time, or one group at a time. But you know, it's it's smaller scale, right? Because they're very pessimistic about the future. They realize that things can just go wrong. And I'm very optimistic about the future, right? So they're more responsible with it, still very strong, but they have some pessimistic where they pessimism about it, but they actually also have doubts about it. And sometimes they can be pleasantly surprised when people can succeed, even though they predict it otherwise. Whereas my predictive powers are technically a little bit stronger than any parent with any hero, but, uh, but sometimes the optimism is the best of me, right? But the pessimism can get the best of the INTPs, which that can be a problem with their extrovert intuition parent. But at least they have TI Hero, where they're constantly so focused on being correct, it's all about the logic, right? But I have TI Parent. I am very pessimistic with logic, right? I spend a lot of time thinking my way through everything as well, but I have a lot of doubts, and I constantly doubt truth. And that also gets explained with TE Critic, because I'm very critical towards statistics, towards, uh, well, statistically, so-and-so said, and then statistically, 90% of all statistics are made up on the spot. You know, like, I'm aware of these nuances where people are just, I mean, I walk around thinking that, you know, very likely, it's most probable that people are dumb, right? People are stupid, right? And I, you know, it's like I walk around looking at people, you're smart, you're not smart until you prove to me that you are intelligent, right? And it, it causes me to be very pessimistic towards the thinking of other people, which can cause me to be closed-minded at times. That's how I used to be when I was super young and not really willing to listen to other people. But as I've grown, I've had a more open mind and realizing that some people are really intelligent and I should give them that chance. I should give them that benefit of the doubt, right? The INTP more just worries that people around them are dumb, but they're at least willing to give them their day in court. I, ENTP, not so much, right? And that can be a problem for ENTPs because they're more pessimistic about the thoughts of other people because they're very critical towards the thoughts of other people because of TE critic. Whereas the INTP has TE nemesis and it's more focused on, well, I'm worried that these people are not intelligent, but I'm gonna at least give them the chance to prove that they're not intelligent before I stupid zone them, right? Because TI hero has its stupid zone with TE nemesis. ISTPs do the same thing. However, unlike ISTPs, INTPs are more patient with people and are going to allow people to fail in their intelligence more often to the point where they're actually gonna be willing to share their TI hero criticism with that person to criticize them on their intelligence in hopes that they get smarter actually so that they can have someone more on their level. They're just kind of bringing people up. But most people take that Oh, you just think I'm so stupid. Oh, you're so alienating. Why, why, would, why would I ever want to be around you? You're so alienating. You alienate me all the time. You make me feel bad. And then the INTP is like disengaging and not really to have a relationship with people because of that disengagement. And then they become super apathetic, right? Remember, attentiveness versus apathy. But the INTP is just trying to help. The INTP is trying to raise up the intelligence in this other person so that they can have someone around them just as intelligent as they are to be able to have that super intelligent interaction, right? ENTPs don't really do that as much. It's more of like, hey, you could do this, and if you do this, you have a better life. It's not really as much about intelligence um, or, or emotional development. It's more of what you can do, what you can do. You know, where there's a will, there's a way. You need to have the will. Final, it's all about motivating. Any heroes are typically motivational speakers. Here's a bunch of any heroes for you. Gary Vaynerchuk, Tony Robbins, Ty Lopez, uh, Owen from RSD Motivation. He's an ENFP, right? Expert intuition heroes are all about motivating other people. And that's what ENTPs do, we motivate others. 
whereas the INTP is just trying to engineer solutions and provide solutions to other people, and those solutions are typically solutions that would make them more intelligent, right? So that they can have somebody on their level to grow and learn from and trade from and share with, etc. at that level. ENTP is not really gonna do that. The ENTP is trying to provide the vision for the whole, whereas the INTP is like trying to provide the vision for the parts, right? Because they're very engineer focused. They're not focused on the vision. The visionary, the engineer. So you hear the saying, the sum of the parts are greater than the whole, or the sum of the whole is greater than the parts. This is very whole focused, the big picture, the whole picture, although these are big picture people, they're not as big picture as the ENTP, but they're super big picture, at least in terms of the parts. What is the big picture behind this particular cog in the system, right? Instead of what is the big picture surrounding the entire system? It's different, right? So, so remember, they're worried about how other people think, worried that they're stupid, but they wanna to try to you know, share their thoughts so that those people become improved. They wanna improve others. They do that with FE inferior. INTPs are very afraid of how other people feel, but when they aspire with making people feel better about themselves and they're very supportive of other people to the point where they become insanely altruistic, why? Well, because they have ENTJ unconscious, which has altruism versus avarice, and they can become altruistic with their ENTJ unconscious, and they're trying to improve other people by supporting other people and be super supportive. This is why INTPs are typically known as the doormat type because they get super taken advantage of. They have a huge big heart, even though they have FI demon and are accused of being cold all the time, that's unfair. On top of the fact they have TI hero and then they're accused of being, uh, uh, having Asperger's or autistic. Oh, you're, you're so in your head, man. You have, you're not, are you, where are you right now? You're not even right here. And then apparently that means they're autistic. No, that's SE trickster. They're not aware of the moment. They have no physical awareness. That's why they drop stuff all the time. Constantly dropping things or fumbling things. That's what INTPs do. INFPs do the same thing, but still they have SE trickster. Oh, but no, we don't understand INTPs because they're so rare. So we have to label them autistic. Yeah, that is so stupid. If you're like a psychologist and you buy into that, and you're watching this, or a psychiatrist, you buy into the whole autistic spectrum crap, why don't you learn cognitive functions and save us the trouble of mislabeling children and then destroying their lives with chemicals and drugs and bullshit instead of like letting them be who they are, you know? Because how the hell are they gonna find themselves, know thyself, and themselves, and become happy if you're drugging them all the time, forcing their mind to go in and out of their different sides of their mind with these drugs, right? So they don't actually really know who they are and can't actually get anything done or be happy. Wow, thank you for destroying the futures of children. Maybe you shouldn't do that. That'd be nice. See, I get so triggered over the autistic bullshit. I'm tired of it, guys. And it's all because people like RITP, super rare. And they have SE trickster. That doesn't mean they're autistic. I mean, look at me. I got SE demon, you know? Do I care about the, the physical? Not really. I really don't care. They're trying to care. I don't care. I'm an ENTP. I really don't give a damn about other people's experience. I only have time to focus on my experience. That's why when I make these videos, I'm not trying to be showy. I'm not wearing a nice suit, you know? I'm not trying, you know, I don't care about the lighting, obviously, you know what I mean? Because I don't care about the experience that I'm delivering to the audience because I don't have SE. It's about my experience. It's about me being comfortable enough to deliver these lectures for you, right? Oh, but you're an ENTP and you know, you, you're obviously on the spectrum of autism and Asperger's, right? No, I lack SE and I have high T, TI, or even T. INTJs get labeled autistic or Asperger's all the time, more so Asperger's. TE users are labeled as Asperger's. TI users are labeled as autistic. It's stupid. Stop doing it, guys. How about you learn people instead of labeling them and then destroying their lives in the process? Parents, are you doing that to your children right now? Maybe you should figure out their types before destroying their lives and their futures and labeling them and treating them like crap because that's bad parenting. Stop doing that. Learn their type first. Verify that they're actually autistic. 
verify that they actually have Asperger's. Verify that they might be on the spectrum. Like, seriously, stop doing that. Stop. I hate it. Because it makes my Essie demon want to burn the world down. Yeah! As I dance over their flaming corpses. I love it. Essie demon, you know, ESFP, entertainer, demon, superego, exists to burn the world. Because if it burns the world down, maybe new life can come. The phoenix, that's the ESFP demon. The phoenix. Yeah. Anyway. So we talked about metaphysics. We talked about TI logic uh, for the parent responsible at logic. What I think. I'm very logical in this way. Uh, constantly getting into debates with people. Arguing with people. Uh, that's what ENTPs do. ENTPs walk around thinking that they could literally talk them, themselves out of anything. Uh, every child very all about ethics. I've had so many people tell me that I am like the most soulless person they've ever met because I have FI trickster, but in reality it's FE child. I'm all about how other people feel. I cannot produce my own feelings, so I never know how I feel. That's why you should never ask an ENTP how they feel. Hell, you shouldn't even ask an INTP how they feel because they have FI demon. Why would you even do that? It's not about how we feel, guys. NTPs are all about what we think. You ask us what we think about things. Do not ask how we feel. It's our job to ask you how you feel. That's how it makes sense, right? That's why we like being around FI users, especially FI users who are NJs, like ENTJs and INTJs. That's how it makes sense because we seek to make them feel better while they're asking us what we think, right? So it fits together all of a sudden. Huh. Come on, type compatibility. That's how it works, cognitive functions. I just wanna give people balloons of candy because I care so much about how other people feel. I want people to feel valued by me. I want the audience to feel valued. I want them to feel good when they watch this, right? That's not the same as giving them a good experience and having amazing showmanship. It's not about that. I'm not here to extroverted sense you people. I'm here to extroverted feel you people, right? And give you a better future because I'm trying to teach you. Because if you learn and watch every single one of my lectures on this YouTube channel or my podcast, that means you are going to have a better future because you're being educated. Knowledge is power, right? Wisdom is what? The unlimited, the omega, right? What you want, wisdom. If you have wisdom, you can have anything in the world. That's the whole point behind wisdom, but you only get wisdom through failure and suffering. I cannot comfort you into wisdom, right? I just want you to have a better future. I want you to have, I want you to feel better. I want you to feel good about yourself, right? In fact, go on the front page of my website, there is a video, a lecture that I delivered about why I even bothered to do this. And it's on the front page. You can go and you can watch it. And it's me going on a 20 minute diatribe about why I even care. And I do care because of Effie Child. And I see the future of this society and it's not good. I see its future with my any hero and it's not good guys. Fiery Brimstone is coming. And the only way we're gonna get around it is if we work together. And that's why I am committed to delivering this content for you guys, right? Any hero, every child. Ah, but what about the child of the INTV? It's introverted sensing. They all know about what they taste. Gotta love that maple bacon ice cream, as I mentioned previously, right? All about being comfortable. Being comfortable is the most important thing to the INTP. You do not want to get them off their comfort ring. You do not want to get knock them out of their zone of comfort. Although sometimes you have to if they get stuck in a rut. INTPs, if you're watching this, you probably get too comfortable in your life. You end up married to the wrong woman for 15 years, afraid of making your children feel bad and then not divorcing her when you probably should, right? I mean, ENTPs still have this problem because we have ISFJ subconscious and we feel guilty in that way too. But it's really bad for INTPs. I and ENTPs still have a hard time tearing away from those bad marriages and those bad relationships. And we can get stuck in a rut too because of our ISI inferior, right? Because we're so insecure of things we've never done before. I've never gotten a divorce before. So I'm not going to do it. It takes us longer to do it, right? Whereas the INTPs is more like, well, I'm not comfortable doing a divorce because I feel guilty that I'm going to be harming my children if I leave their, their, their mother. Let me tell you something, INTPs. If you're in an abusive marriage where you're just this like doormat all the time, and you're trying to stay in a relationship for your children, let me tell you something about that. Your children will not respect you, nor will they respect themselves when they come of age, which means you have just destroyed, you have just inadvertently used your any parent to destroy the futures of your children. Because when my children come of age, not only do I desire to respect them, 
you know, my son when he comes 18 or my daughter when she turns 18, not only do I desire to respect them, but even more so, I desire them to respect me, right? And if I stayed with their mother in this really bad relationship, how would they actually have self-respect or respect me at all? Oh, they can't, which means had I not gotten that divorce, I was at risk of destroying their future and making them into weak people. A weak man for my son who lacked the mature masculine or a weak woman who allowed men to walk all over her, who lacks the mature feminine. Is that really what I want for my children? Hell no. So INTPs, get out of your rut. If you are in those abusive relationships, and I'm just using it as an example, if you're in those abusive relationships, grow a pair and get it done because it is your duty to do so or else you are destroying the futures of your children. I do not care the consequences. That is a fact. Get it figured out. And I'm tired of telling you INTPs over and over and over when it comes to your relationship advice. You ask me for advice in relationships. You're in this abusive relationship with this woman. And for some reason you thought it was okay to marry an ESFJ. Who does that? Well, apparently INTPs do all the time because they lack experience, because they don't know any better, because SI child walking through the world like, oh, I can just experience anything. I'm perfectly okay with that. You know, I... I, I, I want to be able to experience everything there is to offer, including the bad parts. And it's like, what? I will give you the blues of candy that you want, yes, I child, but you need to have self-discipline, okay? There's a lot of great things out there, but you need to have self-discipline. It is your duty. Recognize what your duty is. And you have a duty to yourself. Remember the concept, love your neighbor as yourself? That implies responsible selfishness. How can you love somebody else if you are not loving yourself first? If you are being more selfless, then you are being selfish, then you are a bad person. What? Yes, let me say that again. If you are more selfless than you are being selfish, you are a bad person. Because what it's supposed to be, you're supposed to be as equally selfless as you are as equally selfish in balance. Because selfishness is not a bad thing. Everyone who claims that selfishness is a bad thing, no, it's not. Because you need some selfishness to take responsibility to meet your own needs. You need some selfishness to have personal standards. You need to have some selfishness to have personal boundaries and enforced boundaries. You need some selfishness to know your personal goals and wants and desires. And then you know yourself. And then above all else, you're able to respect yourself because that's life rule number one. You have self-respect, right? And then because of that, it's like, oh, well... Now I'm an attractive human being that people want to be in a relationship with and or be friends with. Huh, it's because you know yourself, it's because you take care of yourself. But if you're just too selfless, you're just a doormat. But, but does that mean I have to be somewhat insincere? Well, now you know why ENTPs, our virtue and vice is sincerity versus insincerity. That virtue and vice is still applicable to INTPs, it's just not your primary. Your primary is apathy versus attentive, right? attentiveness you know attentive being attentive versus apathetic right but your secondary one is mine sincerity versus insincerity people just can't handle the truth they can't handle it because it's so alienating you're hurting my feelings it's because when you tell the truth you're crushing people's beliefs and it makes them feel bad because they make decisions based on beliefs not what's true and you're telling them what's true and you're crushing their beliefs Try having a conversation with a fundamentalist or evangelical Christian in that regard, right? When you're, when you're trying to debate, to have a biblical topic debates with them, you're crushing their beliefs, right? And of course, they internally don't like you or hate you because you're crushing their beliefs with what you believe is true. It's not with what you think is true. True, false, logic, right? Logos, right? That could be an issue. Be careful when doing that. That could be a problem, right? So what do you do? Seek to make them feel better. Preface what you say. Hey, you know, I'm not trying to be an ass right now, but I really think this because of this, this, and this. Because you prefaced it with your F.E. inferior, they're more likely to answer you. And remember, don't be the doormat. I had to learn this. NTPs have that problem too. Our F.E. child just loves people so much and wants to carry them so much that we end up allowing other people to take advantage of us and we can be gullible about it. Benjamin Franklin, he's an ENTP, he got super gullible with his effie child to the point where he ended up on the other side of the world stranded with nothing because he believed some random guy. 
this guy was going to supposedly help him open a printing shop, gave him an address in London. So he went from uh, Philadelphia or Boston, I think it was Boston actually, to uh, London and uh, come to find out it was all a lie. And he ended up being stranded in London and he had to work really hard to get back to the colonies. Wow, what a waste. Well, he was gullible and he let that person take advantage. That's when Benjamin Franklin as an ENTP was a doormat. But fool me once, okay? Fool me twice, never again. SI inferior won't let it happen. But for some reason, the INTP allows those repeat issues. It's because of SE Trickster. SE Trickster is not aware of what other people have done to them already. And so it has to happen even more times to the INTP before they finally get it. Guys, let go, get out of your rut. If you want to motivate an INTP, also if you're in a relationship with them, make them uncomfortable. Make, draw the line, enforce your own boundaries with them. And then they'll realize that they have to go because INTPs make decisions based on what they should do, not what they want to do. Because NI critic is all about being so critical towards what they want, they do not allow themselves to want things. INTPs, for example, do not allow themselves to want to do things, right? This is a problem. INTPs do not allow themselves to want things. Wow, there's that really pretty girl, but I'm in this horrible marriage. I wish I could be dating her right now. Maybe you should end your marriage and then go after the woman you want. That would make more sense to me. But they don't do that because they see everyone else in the world being irresponsible with what they want with their any parent that they do not allow themselves to want things. Whereas me, I am NI nemesis. I am worried about my own future, right? And I'm very optimistic about everyone else's future and I'm trying to be optimistic about my own future. But I realize in order for me to have a good future, I have to help everyone else out with their future first and then I can have a good future because hopefully that they would feel grateful enough for my contributions to them to take me along for the ride. But I also have to make sure that's not a covert contract, that I don't expect that of people. I, I make it clear up front, like, hey, you know, let's have this relationship where I benefit and you benefit simultaneously. We make it a win-win. I have to communicate with them. So remember, ENTPs actually communicate instead of having false expectations with your ISFJ because when you have false expectations, you get all justice oriented and then you want to take revenge because you're bitter. When reality, you're the reason you're bitter because you never stated your terms right out the beginning because you two feel too guilty about stating terms. I used to do that all the time. I hate that. I'll never do that again. Always state your terms in any kind of relationship, business or otherwise, because if you don't, then that could be a problem. Here's a great example. Here's a really good example. INTJ plus ENTP relationships, highest possible compatibility. Here's a great example. The INTJ gets upset at the ENTP because the ENTP repeated something the INTJ said privately, but they did not have an agreement between the two of them that uh, that, that conversation was private, right? The INTJ still got very upset, but the ENTP's like, well, I didn't know that that's what we were, that, that I was held to that standard. And then the INTJ got even more upset. But then after they had, they talked it out and they figured it out, the ENTP said, okay, here's the thing. We're going to agree right now that anything that we say between each other is considered private and will not be repeated to third parties without the consent of the other person. And then they finally have agreement. There's no covert contract anymore in that relationship and that relationship can function. And the SI inferior will remember that commitment and that thing. And then at that point in time, the ENTP will be loyal to that commitment indefinitely for that INTJ and that relationship can flourish as a result. But unless you get that ENTP to commit to something and not be euphemistic and directly say about it, you have to get them to directly commit, nail them down as it were, Anything can happen. Anything is fluid. Anything is possible because it's very fluidic with metaphysics because the ENTP element is water, right? Be like water. You know the Bruce Lee way of doing things because he was an ENTP? What? Yeah. Whoa. And if he wasn't an ENTP, he was an ISFJ, but let's be honest. So, fair enough. SI, inferior of the past. And I'm also very insecure about doing new things, things I've never done before. So it's gotten to the point where I'm trying to aspire with my introverted sensing, so I force myself to do new things all the time. I literally force myself to do it against my own will. I force myself to be uncomfortable. And then, and then I realize ENTPs have this amazing ability to work down under pressure. You wanna have ENTPs become the most productive thing. You want ENTPs to become the most capable, the most brilliant producers and be super productive and get over there. Oh, I'm a starter type, so I don't finish anything I start. Let me tell you how to do it. You put a gun to their head 
and then they're working under pressure. Ah! And then all of a sudden, the work they create is amazing. They're super productive. Put a gun to their head. Make the SI inferior uncomfortable, and you will have that ENTP create miracle after miracle after miracle because we are miracle workers in the same way INTPs are also miracle workers because NTPs are miracle workers. So we talked about FE inferior being afraid of how other people feel and how that can lead to doormat. We talked about SI child trying to be comfortable all the time. Uh, if you're in a relationship with an INTP, always ask them what they think. Give them their day in court. Always state what you want. Always make their child comfortable. Always state how you feel and give them the recognition that they want. Oh, same thing with the NTPs. Always state what you want. Always ask the ENTP what they think. Allow the ENTP to care for you and give them recognition for being so caring and thank them. Especially if you're like an FE user plus FE user. You guys need to stop expecting the other person being grateful all the time and just be grateful back to that person and then they'll be grateful too. It's like an FE loop, a mirror, huh? Also make the ENTP comfortable. If you make the ENTP uncomfortable, you'll cause them to become bitter and they'll become vengeful. Justice. Don't do that. Always make the ENTP comfortable. Sometimes you can make them uncomfortable if you're in a relationship with them, but that can only go so far. Because then they'll get afraid, and then they'll want, they'll, no, they'll, they won't be loyal to you anymore. Because to an ENTP, they're not going to be loyal to just anyone. An INTP is willing to be more loyal to people uh, in that regard, but ENTP, not so much. ENTPs do not give their loyalty to just anyone. It has to be earned. Remember, it is very important to do that. We talked about anti-nemesis. Uh, we talked about TE critical already and being critical of the thinking of others. We talked about FI, a lacking FI, the FI trickster. FI trickster just means I just don't have morals. I really don't. I don't have any sense of morality. You cannot ask me what is a good or bad thing. Morality is a personal decision that's basically this is a good or a bad thing. I do not know anything about morals. I try to be morals, so I pretend to have morals around people, especially other FE users. At certain times when I know they're FE users, I pretend to behave moralistic, and I'm like, I feel really good about what you just said. I'll even say that to them. But I don't have morals. I'm just pretending to have morals, and that relationship is able to be better. You know that whole thing where I'm saying where you might have to be sincere? If you're an NTP watching this, consider the fact that you may actually have to put on a mask and be insincere with every single person that you meet. It's just the people closest to you or the people who are highest compatible with you. Uh, that could be your wife, your children, uh, your family, but also be people like, you know, if you're an NTP, then NTJs or NJs in general, but NTJs especially or SFPs especially, you don't have to wear your mask around them because they just understand you, they get you, right? So that's pretty nice, so you don't have to wear a mask around those people, but to be, to be able to be around people because of our TI parent and our TI hero, guess what? Well, we have to wear our masks around people and be insincere because we're not allowed to exist otherwise. It's really unfair and it sucks that we have to do this, but that's just how we live and that's how we roll. And then SE Demon. You know, I already talked about that too. I don't really care about other people's experience because I have only the ability to care about my experience and make myself comfortable. I don't really have time or the effort to be managing the comfort of other human beings. People exist, you know, there's people out there, SE users, they exist to make me comfortable and as much as they exist to make the INTP comfortable as well. It's super important. And then, we already talked about SE trickster here, we talked about anti critic and allowing themselves to want what they want, and then the FI demon. So, super ego wise, we already talked about the ESFP desiring to burn down the world. ISFPs also can burn down their life, but it's more intimate, it's more, uh, it's not just, you know, there's not really collateral damage, it's just very specific to their own little world that they burn down and only on the specific issue that they don't like for that particular moment and then they burn it down and then rebuild it again, basically. With like Super Saiyan Rage going Vegeta style or trying to use the Gallic gun to destroy the planet. Awesome. Or, you know, turn into a giant raging monkey that shoots laser beams out of your mouth. Pick your poison. So ISFP demon, that's what they do, and it's because, you know, if you tell an INTP that they are uncaring, you know, all the time, because guess what? If, you know, they're gonna do the time, they may as well do the crime, right? That's the NTP way, right? Because justice, because fairness, right? If they're trying to be so supportive of you, but you are ungrateful, if you do not say thank you, if you do not show appreciation to the INTP, their FE inferior will start to hate you and it will bleed into the demon and then they will not like that situation and then they'll start burning things down, destructing things, lighting things on fire like a pyromancer because that's what the ESFP does but on a global level. Whereas 
when there's collateral damage. The ISFP is very specific about it. So, anyway, that concludes this lecture on ENTPs versus INTPs. Probably a little bit longer than usual, but I mean, it's my own type, right? So, may as well add a little bit extra punch in there, especially with how little ENTPs are defined here on the internet. So it's important that I define it as much as I can because a lot of people just don't know ENTPs that well. I mean, people are taught in the MBTI that when you administer tests and people still don't know what type they are, they're an ENTP. That's like the catch-all, right? So it's important to provide that definition for people in this audience to understand the differences. So all that being said, uh, if you found this uh, lecture useful, educational, insightful, helpful, please subscribe to the channel here on YouTube and on the podcast. Also, leave a like while you're at it. If you have any comments or questions about ENTPs or INTPs, please leave them in the comment section, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Thank you also for bringing in the emails. I am answering all those emails. And uh, those of you that have sent me coaching requests, awesome. I've been doing a bunch of coaching with people. Uh, we have a line right now uh, with uh, coaching requests. But if you have additional coaching requests, by all means, get them in, we'll get you scheduled, and then we can get you uh, what you need, and we'll go from there. Uh, the last uh, couple of sessions, I actually put in a little bit extra time with them outside of an hour, which is usually my standard go, because they have really, really complex cases. Uh, so I have been able to help with those complex situations and kind of get them the support and the resources that they need, which has been really cool. And I also learned a lot as well, so that was fantastic. Thank you guys for having the opportunity to be your coach. It was awesome. And yeah. Also, I have not forgot about the test. It is under development. I have not forgot about the transcriptions. They are going to be put on the blog site. I got like four more I'm gonna be doing today as well. Uh, and uh, also gonna be working on, uh, I am working on our first uh, mobile app for the site as well. So all of the coaching money that I get or any money that I get from anything that I do here goes specifically right back into the, the company or the LLC and it's used to build more content for you guys, okay? I don't need the money. I make enough money with my day job. This is just to help you guys get the tools and resources that you need in order to you know, do what it is that I do, right? So front page, watch that lecture about why I do what I'm doing. I, all of this is to be reinvested back into you know, my company so that your dollars are used to produce amazing things like additional infographics, additional lectures, uh, additional content, um, and uh, like we're gonna be doing mobile apps here very soon, additional transcripts, etc. I'm also gonna be doing a Q&A session very soon as well. Uh, so we'll be getting that figured out in the very near future. And I will have a, sec a place on the website where you can actually submit your questions to go on the Q&A. And uh, for Q&A sessions, I may also bring in some guests as well, some guest speakers for that as well, so awesome. I just wanted to give you guys a little update. I haven't done a little update in a while, so yeah, great. Anyway, with all that being said, I have many more of these to do, so I'll see you guys tonight.